Hi everyone, I am Nutrix the Synth Guy and welcome to another video and this one is different. And this one is part one of, I don't know how many parts because I still haven't finished cutting everything up, of an interview with Roland guys. I have Brendan and I've got Dustin and they will explain most of the question I have and I hope you have the same and you will get answers to your question then about the new stuff that they have been coming up with Xenology, Zencore, all of this cloud offer. Do you need to buy it? Do you need to rent it? How does it work? And what's the quality? What's the sound? What, are, what is the offer itself? We will also talk about MIDI 2.0. So the, it's a series of probably three to four uh, shorter videos of interviews. And then I'm going to roll uh, other videos about all this um, sounds that you can actually use from the Roland Cloud. So today uh, the video is about uh, the differences between what they called ACB, which is analog circuit behavior, basically the technology that you will find in the boutiques. The, the, the technology of circuit modeling, very specific, very detailed of how you model a 808, 909, um, SH-101. All of these devices have a very defined way of being uh, described in an algorithm to the circuit itself. You will find these technology in these devices, but you will find it as a plug-in in what they call the plug-out. And the plug-out can be used as a VSD, plug-in or audio unit plug-in in your computer but also it can run in some of the hardware that they built like system one and system eight okay so that's kind of the i would personally say the first step but they, they i know they did other steps before that but that's the first step in what we see today plug out still exists and you can buy only one software one synthesizer if you want but now there's something new there's the Xenology. Xenology, I'll let the guys from Roland explain the differences. Xenology use not ACB, not analog circuit behavior, but it uses analog behavior modeling. So it doesn't work the same way. It has differences, of course. It doesn't sound exactly the same, but then again, it gives you a wider offer because analog circuit behavior already existed. Now there's analog behavior modeling, which is different. And you will probably find it in a lot of Roland devices in the near future. So let's actually listen to the Roland guys that it helps us understand how this works. Remember, this is part one of a couple of, actually, of many different little videos about that. And if you like what I'm doing, thumb up, if you are looking for a one-on-one -on -one consultation for me to help you figure out how to run your studio or install stuff, make it sync, uh, yeah, I'm there to help you go in the link in the description and you will have a link to one-on-one -on -one consultation. That's it. Now let's pass the mic to the Roland guys. Maybe it's a good, uh, just sort of the philosophy of this whole thing and kind of what we're continuing to work towards, which is really a, a confluence of, of hardware and software and making workflow easier for people, right? So in their daily lives of uh, uh, even unexpected situations like, like we're in now, but kind of this um, decoupling of sound and workflow and really allowing people to get the sounds they like to use in whatever environment or instrument they like. So there's a lot of components to that. Um, there's, there's the you know, playing of the instruments. There's how do you produce with it. There's the synthesizer engine itself. And uh, so that's kind of the, the philosophy and what we're moving towards. And you, know, you mentioned plug out. Plug out was uh, really a, a, not a first attempt, but kind of an initial step towards that sort of graying the area between hardware and software, where we could host plugins in the hardware, uh, send patches back and forth, real time, you know, um, uh, you know, back and forth and the ability to, you know, play with the same sounds live or what have you or in a band with the same sounds that you're using in your dog to produce. So, uh, so that's really where we're kind of continuing to move forward. And all the pieces you mentioned are essentially steps and pieces of that, of that overall puzzle. 
Okay. Yeah, and you know, the, the as Brendan was saying, the progression is um, what kind of inspired the whole Zen core system because there are some really amazing um, features to the plugouts, which are still active and we're still having, uh, you know, a lot of people are using these in their DAW and in hardware and that's still 100% supported. But, you know, certain things like uh, polyphony was something that would always come up uh, because the plug out technology is so specific down to the circuit level that it tends to understandably take up uh, quite a bit of processing power, both in hardware and in the DAW. So, you know, one thing that Zencore is offering is much more polyphony. You know, it's a very tweaked system, which allows to recreate, you know, these kind of classic instruments. But, you know, for example, stack an eight voice Jupiter eight on top of a, uh, eight voice Juno 106 in this, or in a split, and then maybe even having an SH 101 bass being played by, you know, the I arpeggio on a Jupiter X at the same time, right? So it's kind of answering a lot of those practical needs that we uh, know and heard that a lot of customers needed. So there was something I was looking online, and there was somebody kind of talking about this, uh, about this, there's a difference between the ABC technology and the mm -hmm. Zen core. And so, so there is a different in the way that the algorithm works, basically, and the way it manages polyphony. That's if that's what I understand. Yeah. So, so you've got uh, ACB, which is analog circuit behavior, is is a circuit based model. So it's really yep. starting at the circuit level and building the instrument up like you would in hardware. Um, it has a it's a super detailed model. So there are plugins, AC, ACB plugins, where even moving a knob that's not part of the patch will actually affect the sound. Uh, it'll actually affect because it affects the circuitry in a real, in a real unit. Now, whether a person needs that level of, of detail uh, in their production, it's kind of a give and take with how much, how, how CPU hungry is this thing? How much polyphony do I need versus that, that level of realism? So the ACB plugins from the circuit level are designed, it's the whole experience as I'm dedicating, it's got the skeuomorphic interface, you know, I'm dedicating um, this processing power or this track or whatever to something that is 100% that. Uh, ABM is an extension of Zencore. So the Zencore is, again, we can talk more about the architecture of this, but they, just for this point, the ABM analog behavior modeling is a subset of the Zencore engine. And what it does is it looks at the end result of the instrument. What is the behavior? If I play a note here, and then I play a note here, and then here, and then here, what happens to pitch on a particular instrument? And then it will it will determine those things and reproduce those, those aspects, but not from a circuit level, more from a behavior level. Um, and that, so it's two different approaches. The end result is sometimes slightly different, usually quite similar. Uh, and this gives the user, you know, the, the uh, opportunity to either use more things, as Dustin said, more polyphony, uh, use this in more environments, perhaps, you know, less powerful machines, more of them. So it's, you know, it's choices. They also have a, a different interface. Um, uh, you know, the, the plug outs, the ACB plugins, the legendary series as we call them, they are true to the traditional experience. So if you've had experience with the original unit or you're really interested in that, it's a great way to, to work with it. The Zen Core plugins, the model expansions that are coming, the Zenology plugin are kind of more of a, um, it's a different approach that is a little bit more intuitive, I think, for people coming to the instruments for the first time. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to, you know, kind of look at it similar to hardware options that we have right now, it's kind of like looking at a TR-08 versus a TR-8S in a certain way, right? The TR-08 gives you that authentic sequencing experience. All the knobs behave exactly like an 808 did, where the TR-8S, you can, you know, take sounds in a bit of a different uh, direction, and it's more of a modern workflow. So that would be kind of the equivalent in software with plug out versus ABM. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. A little bit more clear about the differences between the two. And I, actually, the two coexist in the computer. So it's really awesome. I will test more of these sounds and I'll play you some of these sounds. And actually, they're amazing. They're really sounding great. And you'll see if you're into rolling sounds. These are really cool and great sounding emulation of Roland devices. I mean, they build the stuff, so 
not a surprise. So that's it. I hope you like this one. Again, put the comments in the comments and uh, put the question over there. And if you like what I'm doing, thumb up, share it, click, and uh, see you next time. Cheers, guys.